Hare Krishna. Question from Karuna Sindhu Prabhu. I had heard that Vedanta is the end of Vedic knowledge. So in that sense it is higher than Vedic knowledge. But you explained in your Ishopanishad class, first class, that Vedanta is one of the uh, six schools of philosophy that has evolved from the four Vedas. So it seems that Vedas are higher and Vedanta is lower. So what exactly is the relationship between Vedas and Vedanta? Answer, uh, to understand this relationship, first of all we have to understand the difference between a book and a philosophy. Now sometimes we may say that Bhagavad Gita is a book of philosophy or Srimad Bhagavatam is a book of philosophy. Yes, it is true that these are books of philosophy. But philosophy is also a systematic body of knowledge which addresses the fundamental questions of life. So now if I look at the Srimad Bhagavatam and I want to say, what is the philosophy of the Srimad Bhagavatam? Now the Bhagavatam is not structured like a philosophy course. Okay, what is the answer to this question? What is the answer to this question? What is the answer to this question? Why is there the problem of evil in this world? What is God's relationship with the world? So now these questions are definitely answered in the Bhagavatam, but they are answered in different places. Maybe some questions are answered in Uddhav Gita, some in Kapila's teachings, some in the some in the in Narada's teachings to Vyasa. So like that they are answered in different places. The problem of evil is say addressed in the some the conversation between Bhumi and Dharma, or it is addressed elsewhere in Yudhishthira asks uh, Krishna why his devotees suffer. So it is addressed in various places. So a book uh, contains philosophy, but the philosophy in the book may not be immediately self-evident. That's why even in our presentations, when we want to teach Bhagavad Gita, we start with an introductory course. For example, we may have some course on which may talk about the law of karma. Now the law of karma is implied in the Bhagavad Gita, but it is not explicitly explained. Because in that culture, that explicit explanation will not have been required and Bhagavad Gita did not focus on that. Its subject was more about what, what is the right action one should do. So, like that, Vedas are books, they are literature and Vedanta is a philosophy. So now, what is considered revealed is the Vedas. So in that sense, we could say that the Vedas are higher. Because the words of the Vedas, Shabda Brahmo Bhavam Vidhi. So the Vedas come, uh, Shabda Brahma Akshara Samudbhavam. There are various places where it said like that. that uh, uh, that the Vedas come from the Supreme Lord. Now, after the Vedas have emerged and the Vedic texts are available, as well as the Vedic hymns are there in the memory of the people, now what do they mean? So, to understand that meaning, the Vedas are studied by the various sages and then different sages, they came up with different understandings of what is the actual meaning of the Vedas. So, when we say that, okay, there are the four Vedas over here, so the four Vedas can be said like one body of knowledge, one set of literature. Now what is their meaning? So there are these six systems of philosophy which claim to be explanations of the Vedas, which claim that this is the teaching of the Vedas. So some thinkers say that, that Sankhya is the teaching of the Vedas. Some others say that Nyaya is the teaching of the Vedas. So like that, different people, different thinkers have come up with different philosophies which they substantiate based on the Vedas. Now, Vedanta Sutra is a book and Vedanta is a school of thought. Vedanta and Vedanta Sutra are not exactly the same. Vedanta is a school of thought, it's a philosophy. And Vedanta Sutra is a book. So Vedanta Sutra is a book which is foundational for Vedanta. But Vedanta as a school of thought also has two other pramanas. It is based on Prasthanatraya. So there is Shruti, Smriti and Nyaya. Shruti is the four Vedas themselves. The Smriti is the Puranas, especially the Bhagavad Gita, which, cont which is contained in the Itihas Mahabharata. And then the Nyaya is the Vedanta Sutra. So that means we have three things now. We have the Vedas, then we have the Vedanta Sutra and then we have Vedanta. So, now, Vedanta, often the way Shri Prabhupada uses it, he often uses it as equivalent with Vedanta Sutra, the book. 
but in a sense it is Vedanta means the end of knowledge so in Vedanta Sutra which is a foundational book for the school of thought called Vedanta in Vedanta Sutra the statements of the Vedas especially the Upanishads are analyzed critically and exhaustively okay this statement is there what does this mean and then from the context from the language from the knowledge of the overall philosophy the meaning is given so now while giving this meaning various other schools of thought are evaluated and refuted so Vedanta Sutra basically takes the teaching of the Vedas especially the Upanishads which are the which are the philosophical part of the Vedas and explains their meaning and while explaining their meaning if other schools of thought have given alternative meanings those meanings are refuted and the correct understanding is explained so in this way <coughs> Vedanta Sutra is considered to be the end of Vedic knowledge in the sense that different people speculated differently of what might be the meaning of the Vedas but the same person who who wrote the who put the Vedas in written form that same person is the Acharya of Vedanta the different schools of thought have different Acharyas for example Kapila is the Acharya of prominent Acharya of of Sankhya and like that there are different sages who are Acharyas for different uh, schools of thought but they are all claiming their authority based on the Vedas but that same author has written Vedanta Sutra and Vyasadev quotes the Vedas and also refutes other explanations of those Vedas and establishes Vedanta as the conclusive understanding of the Vedas so in that sense Vedas are like the source texts they are the final repositories of authority but based on this repositories of authority what is the conclusion that conclusion is given in a book called Vedanta Sutra and uh, that conclusion is itself a system of knowledge, a school of thought and that is called as Vedanta and this, it, it derives this name Vedanta, the end of Veda because after exhaustive analysis of the content of the Vedas this conclusion has been arrived by the same author who wrote the Vedas and in, in that sense it is the authoritative conclusion and of course Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would explain that that same Vyasadev also made that conclusion more explicit and more clear in the Srimad Bhagavatam you see that's why it is called as uh, the commentary on the Vedanta Sutra uh, that is of course a different subject but suffice it to say that the relationship between the Vedas and Vedanta or Vedanta Sutra is rather than thinking of which is higher and which is lower we can think it in terms of our source texts and the understanding of those texts as given by the same author so which is more authoritative both are considered authoritative but the Vedanta Sutra is the con is the conclusion of the Vedas given by the same authority same same author and then the body of the, the, the school of thought the body of knowledge that is taught in the Vedanta Sutra is called as Vedanta thank you Hare Krishna